So, I'm 30 now. Um, I'm not sure how to feel about that or anything. Um, in this video, I'll be really talking about something that I want to make a reality, which is my project of me making video games and an animated show. Growing up and still to this day, I enjoy video games and watching animated shows and anime. Because of the games I have played and shows I have watched, I want my career to be creating an animated series and, if possible, video game. During college, I dreamed about doing it, but I felt nervous about making it real, and I wasn't in a good place due to dealing with depression. But today, it's different. I'm still working on details. I think, or I like to believe, I'm halfway done with the important info. I have an outline of a good number of episode summaries. I have ideas for characters, ideas for a game or two, how things work within the world of my project, and more. I don't know how long I've been really working hard on this project to make it real. Maybe about half a year now. I started sometime last year. Of course, I took time off and played some games, took care of my mental health, went outside and did shopping, and more. I'm going to give a basic concept of my project or one of my ideas, but I don't want to give so much detail due to the fear of someone using the idea and or concept. The concept of my project is a diverse cast of people in a world where fighting is a big deal and a big focus. These fighters fight one another to prove who is the best, to become stronger, and to push themselves to do better. However, an evil who want to destroy and rule over people must be stopped. And the good God and others must do battle to stop the evil. I'm not sure yet, but I want to make a shonen or anime show or something anime like. Maybe a western made show, but with Japanese animation influence. I want to say a PG-13-ish show, because I have ideas stories and other things about the PG rating that may not be for children and I don't want to limit myself. The genres are action, adventure, fighting, and martial arts with small slice of life moments and small references and post to video games and other anime. As for the gaming side, I have more than one game idea and genre like a 3D action game and a fighting game. I mean, anime and the fighting game genre go well together. But I'm having a few issues. Well, for one, I'm only one person doing a lot, so I might have missed or overlooked something. I'm not a voice actor, I don't want to be one, and I have no idea what my character would sound like. I don't know anything about how to make music and I don't play any instrument. I'm not the best at writing villains or bad god and I need help in that area to make them stand out or to be more meaningful and more of a danger to the good god. Not to mention I can't do everything alone. Me, anime, manga, TV show, video game, and whatever you can think of are not made by one person. Yet, an idea can come from one person, but it takes a whole team to make it happen. What I have to do is pitch my idea to someone or a company and go from there. There are more details, but that's the basic plan for me. I'm not the type to make a studio or run a business. I don't have the money or know-how. 
there is one more thing I want to talk about or give my opinion on, and that is diversity and representation. I bring this up because I have seen shows and games in recent years that try to do this. Some do it right, but some do it wrong, or it being done in a wrong way. Representation and diversity can mean different things to different people. There are multiple types of diversity, like opinion, race, culture, perspective, and more. A small part of my project had this in mind in terms of the characters I want to make. I made characters who are great or an actual person who happen to be of a certain race or whatever the case. And my project does take place in modern day USA. Minor questionable thing. Yes, there is representation, but it's mostly in the race or skin color area. However, the storytelling and quality in my project are higher on my list than the diversity and representation. Quality above diversity. Don't worry, I want to do things right. I don't want to avoid cultures or focus on stereotypes. Characters are supposed to be more than the color of their skin and more. And I don't want to pander to every group or to weird people. I'm aware of a lot of this. Okay, I have a project that I want to make real, but I need help. I know some people will turn down my project, or I would have to make small adjustments, and that's okay. But hopefully, I have nothing to worry about. It had come to my and other people's attention that there is something wrong with modern society and certain people. We have parents not raising their children right, a problem with education, victim mentality, weak-minded people, overly sensitive people, obesity, toxic women, the man of fear, gaslighting, catering to people's delusions, everything is labeled as problematic and racist, crazy activist, false information, and questionable influencer, just to name a few. People are taught what to think, but not how to think. People of today lack one of the following, nuance, critical thinking, common sense, or all three. Every type of agenda is being forced down everyone's throat from all different groups and people, from the left, the right, men, women, and somewhere in between. I use somewhere in between because why are there 50 gender identities and much more? And it doesn't help with the youth and how big social media is. I have no idea what's really going on with modern society. I want no part of this and I don't want to add on to the problem. Because of what's been going on, I have become very skeptical of everything, but I'm not a negative, angry, or bad person. I would love to help people or change something, but I'm a dude who just play Pokemon. Is it happening everywhere? No, of course not, and thank God. It did an issue that needs to be talked about and had did affect the people. Yes, there is real criticism here and it should be addressed. What's been going on had affected learning, businesses, people's mindset, and more. Sadly, what is going on in modern society had an effect on media like video games and TV shows. When trying to find what's wrong with modern society, I of course didn't find all the answers. It could be something simple like toxic politics and stupidity or something else. But I have a question. What it woke? No, really. What it woke? I keep hearing that word and I'm wondering for the life of me, what is it? 
And what the real definition? It worried you so much. It had gotten to a point where people have to talk about it, define it, and can't ignore it. When looking at what's wrong with modern entertainment and why people don't like it, the word woke keep coming up. It woke had mostly been blamed for why video game, TV shows, and movies are bad. But is that true? I see this word used a lot, but for me, it's hard to really explain and define it. I think everyone had a different definition of woke, and that's where the confusion lies. It does not help that politics and media like video games and TV have a different definition from each other, which adds more to the problem. I don't use the word myself, but I will use the word woke because I have to talk about it. Looking into detail and the uh, opinion, there is some real criticism and it woke sadly had affected a few things going on, but not everything. You might be thinking, why are you talking about woke and where are you going with it? Please listen and hear me out. And don't worry, it isn't the moment I come out as an anti-woke person or anything crazy. But I will say, I'm very annoyed with all of this. But before I do, I should talk about myself to give people my point of view. I'm a person with his own opinion. I don't want to come off at knowing it all or better than others because I'm not. I'm just a dude who played Mario Kart. I know right from wrong. I have nuance and you common sense. I'm open to some new things, but I'm not so open-minded to a point where my brain falls out of my head. I can listen to different people who are not out of their mind and can understand a few things from their point of view. I have no problem with people of different races and cultures. I have no problem with gay and trans people, and so on. If I do have a problem with someone, or don't like them, it's not because of their race, culture, sexuality, and so on. It's because of a person's personality, behavior, mindset, and action. No one should be treated differently, better or worse because of their race, where they are from, their sexuality, and so on. Treat others as you like to be treated. You know, all that equality stuff and not equity. I don't talk about politics because it's not my subject and it has become very toxic. But if I do talk about it, it's more in the area of the mindset and behavior of people. I keep politics to myself. But I did like people who bully people for their field and opinion. I do care about other people. I can put myself in other people's shoes, but that can only go so far sometimes. I would raid in a time period before the questionable stuff happened to think and to never let anyone or anything dictate what I thought. What it woke. The meaning is to be aware of injustice. However, in 2024, it apparently means something different. It could have the same meaning, but no one can give a good answer because there are too many answers, but most are biased live from the left and the right. This woke includes multiple things like gay and trans rights, women's rights, climate change, the environment, just to name a few. So, woke by itself is okay. Unless I met some other politics relating to it. Looking at woke in terms of politics or on paper, it is not too bad. But, when looking at woke in terms of behavior and mindset, that is a different story. Looking into things, I came across many different videos, 
So I reacted and watched the video and did it where I understand why people hate woke or woke -knit. The nuclear family is associated with whiteness and whiteness is associated with racism, bigotry, transphobia and white supremacy. All white people are racist. I believe that white people are born into not being human. You know this is get this shit the fuck out of here. If you use a single standard to grade your students' languaging, you engage in racism. It's not about the politics or the meaning that it hated. It's the mindset and attitude of these people. They act and claim to be tolerant, peaceful, and accepting, but they are not. They are toxic, hateful, and unhappy. For people who say that they are tolerant and inclusive, their actions and mindset don't match that. They claim to fight and want to stop racism, but they act racist to white people. They claim to support freedom of speech, but ban lectures that are not in line with their feud. They don't respect free speech and silence what they think is hate speech, which leads to cancel culture and or attacking people, something I do not support. With woke, you're not allowed to have a different point of view. You have to have their point of view. You cannot disagree with anyone no matter how wrong something is. So woke, or I should say toxic woke people, in my point of view, are hated because most of them are extremist or annoying extremist. And being that way is the best way to make people hate you. And yeah, I understand why they are hated. Looking at its history, I learned people use the word political correctness and social justice warrior before woke. These words are used as a prerogative to mock people. I think when people use the word woke, they are using it the same way as SJW and PT. So, woke is another rebrand of other words or all the same to some people. I have no idea how woke replaced these words. Whatever word it used, people are using it to mock how they act and the stereotype of what they look like, but not so much the viewpoint. Also, why do some of them look like this? Can someone please explain the stereotype of why they look like this? Having reasonable left viewpoint or to be aware of injustice is fine, but the woke mindset or ideology is different. The woke mindset takes idea to stupid or toxic extreme, which is the problem. The woke mindset or woke people include a lot of things like activism or I should say bullying people, toxic feminism, taking issues with normal masculinity, viewing boys and men as oppressors and a problem for everything, for simply being male even if they never did or said anything, because of what bad and evil men have done in the past, viewing all white people as racist even if someone never did or said anything because of history, their pro-fat activist belief ideas that aren't aligned with reality, like believing there are 50 genders or gender identities, they find everything to be problematic or racist and more just to name a few their behavior includes victim mentality and the poor victimhood often refer to violence both verbally and physically demonizing and shaming others controlling what people say and the language they are very weak-minded and very sensitive they get 
offended on the behalf of other people and much more. One thing to point out with these fake or toxic activists is that they aren't truly fighting for justice. Their goal is to not actually be good, but to appear to be good for clout. They aren't trying to do good things to actually help other people or make things better. The worst part with the toxic lefted is that anyone who disagrees with them or calls them out, they will try to destroy your life or career and attack you or harm you in any way, aka cancel culture. They can deflect criticism by claiming the person is against their cause and label someone a racist or a bigot. It is not okay to call someone that unless a person in an actual racist and or bigot, they throw that word out so much. I can say that a lot of people are not a racist, a bigot, or anything close to that. But why do they keep doing it, or why do they keep getting away with it? Because there is no consequences for their action. Without consequences, their action and their behavior are going to keep on going. What annoys me is that the loud and fake activists are being heard and seen over the real ones who are reasonable, understanding, and want real change. There are activists in the past who fought for people not to be treated poorly because of their race and more. There are maybe some real modern activists who are doing the right thing. Grouping all activists, fake or real, at the same or at toxic people is not right in my book. A real activist wants to help people and improve society. A woke person or SJW want power, clout, and recognition. There is a look at things rationally and with nuance is something a real activist has. Regardless of the original or current meaning of the word, when one uses the word woke, it always referred to American left-wing politics or overly progressive politics. It should be used to insult the toxic far-left mindset, but not used as a blanket term to mark anything on the left or something people don't like like a lead black person or a gay person in TV or a game. I don't totally agree with it being used as an insult, but we somewhat need to. If not woke, what word should we use to talk about some of the crazy, wrong, toxic, or questionable-minded people? I say it because there is a bit difference between a Democrat a real activist or having normal left views versus the other questionable far left minded people. These far left people are not interested in unity, quite the opposite. They are trying to impose their feud on the rest of us. They have questionable reform like political correctness to the extreme, not teaching math and grammar because it is racist, which it is not. Not teaching biology because it is hurtful to people who believe in 50 genders or gender identity, rewriting history in their vision, and more. Not everything is problematic, racist, or whatever they say. When you have the toxic far left mindset, you can feel or find everything to be problematic, even when it is not. They are finding dumb things to be mad at and annoying people in the process. If racism still out there, badly yet, and of course more work needs to be done. But these people are not helping and are attacking anyone who they think is hateful. These woke people. 
even alienate normal center left people and people they claim to be helping. If any progressive refuse to talk about the people and continue to dismiss them as a myth, this will only empower the right wing and the anti woke backlash. And that is not good for everyone. I know I have talked a lot about how bad woke is, but let's not forget how bad the right wing is. Now, you might be thinking, am I a part of woke culture? <laughs> no. I have my own opinion, and they don't like different opinions. So, I don't fall into woke. I don't support any group who harm bully and control other people or crazy people in general i'm not a part of woke or the anti-woke i'm just a dude that played mario party how i feel woke outside of politics is hard because it mostly had to do with that subject if i have to use woke i use it at a very rare insult or used it with another word like woke politics or other words like SJW, angry feminist, crazy fake activist, stuff like that in terms of their far left behavior. But how can I make people think of woke differently? I think I got it. Woke used to be good. But it had become toxic and pointless far left outrage that annoyed people to no end. It had combined and tried to be the catch all of feminism, sexuality, gender identity, different identity, concern for the planet, the rights of other people, and more. But it does not actually mean any of it. And everything about these people is a lie. None of them don't want to help people. And woke does not correct real injustice. But add to the problem and make things worse. People use it woke to be loud. To be thin. And to attack or cancel other people. For not having the same opinion or mindset as them. It is a weaponized personal evil masquerading as a genuine social concern with victimhood being a part of their identity and the movement. Or something like that. Cancel culture has become one of the most annoying things ever. This has allowed people to harass someone under false info 99% of the time. At this point, cancel culture is the same as bullying or harassment. And aren't we against that? Whenever I hear someone being canceled, it's one of the following. But the word it trying to cancel people under fault accusation. Cancel culture is so bad and toxic now. Anyone can be canceled for any kind of political view, comment, commentary, or holding belief. Both the left and the right have done this, but in recent years, the SJWs are behind both of the canceling, and no one needs to take them seriously. These people will cancel someone for not having the same mindset as them. You can be canceled because you believe in biology and or reality and not the 50 gender identity. You can be canceled because you folded or supported a certain person or party. The Five Nights at Freddy creator got in hot water because he is a conservative and had donated money to several Republicans. What if this was the other way around? People got mad at Chris Pratt for his religious feud, so you can be canceled, attacked, or harassed 
for basically telling the truth, the biology or reality part, or having an opinion or belief in 2024. How stupid is that? No one should lose their career, their job, be banned on every platform, or be attacked or harassed by a mob of people over this crap. When someone is being cancelled, people need to wait until all the real info is out before you say anything and allow a person to defend themselves or realize how stupid they are and learn that a person didn't do anything bad or it's not that big of a deal. Someone like Bill Cosby had done bad things to women and there is proof of what he had done. Him and a few others are the rare exception, but other than that, Cancel culture is wrong, and sadly, it's not some boogeyman. Some ordinary people or lesser-known YouTubers have lost their public image or career because of this. We have innocent victims because entitled people believe their opinion and sensitive feelings are of higher value. I can't believe people in groups are trying to force people to think that being obese is okay and healthy. It's not. It's okay to be a little fat, but not obese. These fat activists and communities have created something called fat phobic, and they are trying to make it the same and comparable to the word bigoted. I don't know if it something from the pad that was laughed at, left behind, and then brought back in recent years, or something modern society has made up, but this is one of the stupidest things I have ever heard of. I looked into this, and it fat phobic claimed to be rooted in racism. Okay. Can people stop using it is rooted in racism or whatever else? You can't just say something like that and have no proof. Also, stuff like that can be disproven. Anyway, I have no idea what the real root behind this whole thing, but some people point to this book fearing the black body. I don't want to give money to someone who I disagree with or is not telling the whole story. So I looked at info online and someone reviewed this book and looked at the details. This YouTuber did not find a link between fat phobia to racism. And even if this book was not bullcrap or the link was real, there is still a big problem. There is a lot of evidence and research that shows that being overweight or obese can be the cause of plenty of health problems and make other health conditions worse. This whole thing is you to deflect all responsibility from themselves, protect their unhealthy lifestyle, Make excuses to be obese and allow fat people to mock or dislike people who are not fat. I have watched too many videos from the YouTubers about these people and the stupidest stuff the fat community has said. Okay, yet yeah, body comes in all shapes and sizes and bodies have equal value, but the fat community failed to see two things. Losing weight takes time, and there is a difference between being overweight or obese versus a body type that made it harder for some people to lose weight, or some people have bigger body parts than the normal. If someone chooses to be obese, okay. But don't tell other people it is okay to be obese. 
promoting a lifestyle that can have dire health consequences is not right. Listen, we get it. You have insecurities about your weight. Everyone has insecurities. I don't like my void, and I'm a bit insecure about it. And I understand some people have trouble trying to work out because of time. Laziness is not one of them. You choose to be this way, so do not target people because you are jealous, insecure, and do not want to lose weight. Stop using your free time to demand other people to accept your poor lifestyle choices and use that time to get in shape or be better. The fat community had nothing to argue against and they know their ideology is not defendable though so they use racism as a shield. That is super wrong. It is using a very real struggle to serve their own need and to help their movement. Woke or woke politics is not the only reason why modern society is the way that it is right now and it not the only thing that does bad. Let's not forget the toxic opposite side of woke and their politics. Not to mention, we have other issues like men and women being radicalized by toxic feminism in the manosphere. A reason why you don't hear people speaking on topics like, for example, what is going on in the gay and trans community is because people who are not in the community don't want to be labeled as homophobic, transphobic, be canceled, or lose their job for simply calling out insane behavior. Or if someone is gay or trans, they get called a self-hating gay or trans person, use the term internalized homophobia or transphobia or whatever. The thing is, there are the very questionable things going on in the community, and people who are gay or trans have talked about it and do not support some of what is going on in the modern version of the community. What annoys me is why does everyone think if someone is gay, for example, that person had the same opinion as everyone in the community, or that person automatically belongs to a community and not the population. One gay person does not speak on the behalf of all gay people. Although everything I said can be said about a lot of other communities, replace gay and trans with insert something here. There are so many issues I don't even want to talk about. It is a never-ending list of problems and I have no time for this. Does not matter who you are or what you identify as and much more. You can identify as anything you want, even though what you identify as is stupid. Don't expect people to conform to your worldview. Just because someone does not agree with you about something does not mean that they are any kind of bigot or have any phobia. Because phobia means fear or hate. There are some people who are hateful, do not get me wrong. But for the most part, people are not scared of you. People don't hate you. People just don't agree with you. If the truth is more important than people's feelings, don't tell people they have to play along with a lie because someone might be offended. I'm sorry someone lied to you, but if you are confused about who and or what you are, then go figure it out and good luck to you. Don't make other people walk on eggshells around you until you are done. Listen, there is nothing wrong with being 
sensitive to other people and being humble to them. But at a point, all this censorship and nonsense is going to lead to tyranny. People need to learn to take a joke or stop being a snowflake. But I have some more stuff to talk about. Remember what I said earlier? Sadly, what is going on in modern society had an effect on media like video games and TV shows. When looking at what's wrong with modern entertainment and why people don't like it, the word woke keep coming up. It woke had mostly been blamed for why video games, TV shows, and movies are bad. So now I have to talk about media like video games and TV shows and I think that are happening right now in the entertainment industry. Uh, what's wrong with modern games? If anyone had ever made a video about why modern gaming is bad or negative, more likely, I would agree with everything someone had to say. Unfinished game, grinding, bit boring open world, using FOMO, trying to go after the Fortnite or Overwatch crowd, micro trend action, time crunch, battle pad, battle royale, live service game, going after trend, and so on. As for what is wrong with modern entertainment like TV and movies, it's a bit more difficult to answer for me. But I'm going to answer it by talking about modern entertainment as a whole. Some of the demographics of the web are changing and not for the better. People are making stuff or changing things for the modern audience and worrying about offending people who are the offended people the far left woke people hjw top feminine the fat community and other word names and nonsense group relating to these in other words no one it really offended well normal and reasonable people are not offended because of these issues Modern entertainment is getting destroyed and made worse due to trying to please the crazy people. They are trying to please the loudest complaining minority while ignoring the polite majority. However, there is more to the story than what I will be talking about. I wish it was that simple, but it's not. Nobody had all the answers to solve the problem, and even if someone did, there is an issue with the companies and rules or politics that have gotten into entertainment. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher-ups, and if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, Go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's gonna happen if they don't give you what you want. Because they have to consider, like I, I say that all out as a joke, but it's actually very, very true because if you start to consider the people who are player and audience facing and who have to deal with mitigating harm and with keeping the sentiment around their game and their project positive, there's like a genuine value that you can impress upon them with um, both ethically and financially. Let's talk about Fweet Baby Inc. There have been a lot of talk about them, and I understand why. FBI and other DEI consulting companies are used to diversify games, which sounds okay, but, and there's always a but, this diversity has been criticized because it's not true or natural diversity, or it being done wrong. Sadly, there is more and it's a ton of info. It would require going down a rabbit hole of drama from people who work for FBI and other DEI groups. In a nutshell, people have found evidence about the questionable people and the things that they do 
have done and say, and some of the evidence is true. What they are doing is not okay with a lot of reasonable people. To make matters worse, there are people like biased woke gaming journalists who are backing and supporting FBI by not telling the whole story or leaving out important info to cover up for them. These biased journalists are trying to paint people who call out FBI and some of their wicked actors by calling them racist, bigot, and evil, which is not true. These journalists and DEI people bully, cancel, and threaten people while acting like the victim. I just want to say, I want nothing to do with Sweet Baby Inc. or any DEI consulting group. One, I'm perfectly capable of diversifying my character, if I want to or not. So, I don't need any of the DEI or narrative consulting people or whatever they called. Two, I don't support how they truly operate. The action, mindset, and behavior of some of these people are things I do not want to deal with and don't support. I do understand why many people are concerned about the influence of consulting companies because it could lead to a shift in industry standards and compromise creative freedom. While FBI and other DEI groups are not the system directly controlling gaming and its stories, but they do have a level of influence People have been saying gaming or entertainment have gone woke. Is that true and why? Well, the answer is ESG or money and DEI had a part in it too. Looking at basic info on ESG and DEI sound good on paper. However, from digging a bit deeper, I learned ESG and DEI have problems. DEI is not about diversifying people or fair treatment. It's about limiting diversity of thought and affecting free speech. ESG has a lot of info. ESG is about greed and not about helping people. ESG is a credit score for companies. If a company had a good score or better, they can get money from a feather. BlackRock and Vanguard have a lot of money and are giving it to companies, but they must follow their rules or politics. What are the rules, politics, and requirements? They are not going to give the info out so easily. But some people have picked up on a few things, like diversity quotas or caring about Pride Month. Also, I have no idea if something like the opinion of one person can affect the credit score. Right now, some companies are chasing ESG and are doing whatever they can to get that money. This includes diversifying their company, changing things in entertainment for the modern audience, aka remove outdated or offensive things, pandering hard by adding diversity, which could mean different things to different people, or inclusion into movies, showed or gaming all of this is not about helping the environment or supporting communities which is what esg on paper is supposed to be about there might be a few companies or people wanting to help the environment or do the right 
thing, but both companies are faking it. Let's just say if they rule from investors that you or your media can't upset or offend people. I can't prove it, but hear me out. Because companies are caring about ESG, they are trying hard not to offend people and make these investors happy. They are sanitizing their media or making it worse. Now, some media have become a bunch of rush, generic, safe garbage. Instead of focusing on creativity, good storytelling, good writing, and interesting character development, this type of media focuses on bot ticking quotas and representation and trying to net as big of an audience as possible. Good life stories, good writing, fun, and creativity are replaced with bad lessons, boring characters, and virtual signaling. Now, you might be wondering who is doing the sanitizing. It could be the people who are making the media themselves, or think of this in a different way. Because of the rule of not offending people and sanitizing, who else is good or in this case the worst at finding things to be problematic? The HAW or woke people. By telling people what is problematic, this is one way they might have found work in entertainment. It could be because the company is trying to diversify their workplace. Whatever the case, this window has allowed far left political ideology, sensitivity reading, or nonsense into the entertainment media. All of this and more is how entertainment media has got word. All of this ESG and DEI stuff doesn't make or care about making a great game, movie, TV show, or any entertainment media. This is what happened when you hire the questionable people to be your workers instead of great storytellers or creative people. This is what happened when rules, pandering, and greed are more important than making good entertainment. Even if we remove ESG, DEI, or far left politics, there are still problems like companies not taking red, budget for movies, studio interference, microtransaction, time crunch, or abuse of people. Also, I have no idea if ESG or DEI is required or forced by law for every company or not. Let's just say a creator wants creative freedom and doesn't mind different ideas, but it not being forced. This option could be out of a person's control. A creator might be forced to work with an SJW or a committee of people. This inclusion thing can be used for bad reasons like forced diversity or politics or trying to tone down some part of the idea. Making the show, movie, game, or IP work. Diversity and inclusion are not bad. It's how it is being used I have a problem with. As for how to change DEI, my take, treat everyone equally, you know, as a human. Don't use the raid or whatever car to be a a-hole or bully people into getting your way. Or don't be an a-hole in general.
I don't know how to run a business or any of the corporate stuff, but a company should hire the best people and worry less about identity politics or being all inclusive. This may sound crazy, but hire people based on knowledge, talent, creativity, or merit. Not because they check boxes or to fill diversity quotas. I do believe companies in some way should give opportunity to some people in our group. But it needs to be done the right way and not at a pawn if the best person happened to be a gay black woman or whatever who can do the job and not cause problem, that is great. There is a big issue with some of the toxic far left gaming or entertainment journalists, entertainment creators, and far left or HAW people in general when it comes to entertainment. The problem with some of the HAW journalists is that they simply want their voice to be the only one that is relevant to game developers and other entertainment media. They don't care about different opinions being represented in games or other entertainment. Normal creators are not going to change their game or whatever the case to fit the far left idea, political talking point, and sensitivity. These toxic people are the embodiment of hypocrisy. I mean, we all have a little hypocrisy and we all should work on that. But my god, these people are the worst when it comes to hypocrisy. They expect to have their experience validated, but refuse to see any other experience other than their own. I've been hearing about this ugly women topic in gaming. I look into it and this whole thing may be the a hypocrisy and double standard problem with HAW, toxic feminist, or some women in general when it comes to men. It's not a big deal when men are body shamed, but when women are body shamed, it caused the people to have a meltdown. Also, body positivity is not for men according to some women. It's okay for women to have standards when it comes to men, but if men have standards when it comes to women, that is somehow wrong. Beautiful, handsome, and attractive men or female fan service in games are okay, but beautiful and attractive women or male fan service in games are not okay, and SJW have a meltdown. It called a double standard for a reason. Video games and other media were divert before the HAW start complaining about it and imposing their narrow idea of divert. Most gamers do not have a problem with being inclusive or seeing diversity. Street Fighter had always been divert with fighters from different parts of the world, while gay and trans people were not always viewed in the best light and had to be edited back when gay and trans were not accepted as it is today in the USA. We had the bad part, but things have changed for the better. Stop shoving your personal activism and ideology into existing IP. Go make a new IP show or whatever. But they don't want to do that. They want to ruin that IP. And even when they do have an IP, it's not enough for them. To the toxic woke or HAW creators, don't blame the audience, consumer, or people in general when they don't want to watch your show or whatever. 
stop using diversity, race, and so on as a shield to hide your bad writing and bad ideas. Don't lie and misrepresent people who criticize your show or game as racist or bigot. Both people are not any kind of a bigot. By doing it, you are making things even worse for yourself. People do want to see or don't mind diversity or divert characters, but not from SJWs or woke people. These SJWs are annoying, unreadable, very sensitive, and very unhappy people. They get triggered by stupid stuff. So it's not a good idea to try to make something for them or to make them happy. If I got offended as much as these people, I would be miserable and unhappy to the point of self-depletion. Again, there is a reason why woke or SJWs are hated because their mindset and behavior. There is no denying that woke had called discord among fan bases. The discord around a show or game being woke is not a good way to feel entertainment in my opinion. Anti-woke people will call something woke because it had diversity and it fed stuff to end up being garbage because of diversity. A work of fiction is not woke for having diversity in the cast or story. When people use woke that way, it means nothing and becomes too fake. Anything can be woke in their eyes. A black main character or anything that feels normal gay and normal trans people in a positive way is woke or political to them, and that is not true. I'm not a part of the woke or anti-woke group. I have nuance and I'm critical of woke mostly when it comes to entertainment. I don't use woke to replace real criticism in media. There are some fair criticism like pandering, race swapping, if it's a remake or whatever the case here is, taught the feminism, forcing people into roles that don't make sense or they didn't earn. There are other things I have been hearing from other people and it not from me that make a game or show woke or have woke nonsense like the use of they them pronoun or neo pronoun, gender ideology or ugly women in game or female characters being uglyfied. Also, I do not know if there is different levels of woke or a woke meter. I'm okay if a show, movie, or game is a little woke. Just a little bit and I will tell you why. But again, I have to add what it woke. But this time in terms of entertainment media like TV shows and video games, well, this time, there is a good answer, and it comes from an AI. AI gave me a better answer than most humans on the internet talking about woke media. Anyway, we have a good definition, and I can talk a few details about what it is my project. Okay. My project had nothing to do with social justice issues or systematic injustices, and it does not address the issue or it is never even talked about. My characters don't have an issue with a person because of their race, sexuality, and so on. If my character don't like a person, it because of their action and behavior. My project does not really tackle or challenge traditional norms and values. My characters do live different lives and have different opinions, views, and ideas, 
my project does have some diversity and representation, mostly race, but I'm not promoting diversity like crazy. So, my project is not woke or barely. It only had diversity, but it's not the main focus. My focus is on fun, action, or entertainment first, racial diversity second, and other stuff last. I'm not going to force politics or feminism in my project. Don't get me wrong, I would like to say a few words about something, or maybe tackle a serious issue, or if my writing just happened to have a topic like depression and mental illness, free will, or war. This woke meaning does not sound bad, but in the hands of toxic woke people, it can be used to teach bad or wrong lesson like telling someone they are a victim or the oppressor because of their race, sexuality, gender, and so on, which is not true. To circle back why I'm okay if a show, movie, or game is a little woke or outside the norm, because it is healthy to be exposed to different ideas cultured or people as long as it balance or come from a good place. I'm somewhat open-minded when it comes to video games, but not everything is appealing to me. I play a lot of different games, genres, and systems. I do have a few favorite genres like music, platforming, kart racing, fitness, and action. The point is, I'm somewhat open-minded. The thing is, shows I watched as a kid tackle serious issues or had a political topic like racism, discrimination, and pollution, and teach life lessons like treat others how you want to be treated or body image, and did what a time when woke was not mainstream. I mean, South Park had tackled serious issues and had life lesson, and it's one of the most controversial shows ever, and it is far from woke. The difference with old media is that woke was not mainstream, and these shows still came from a good place of entertainment. It put open to ideas and better balance, but some old and new shows that tackle issues can be too cheesy. So much media that came out before 2015 or when woke became mainstream would be called woke by today's standard or used as an argument like saying media had always been woke. Which is not a fair argument because woke was not mainstream before 2015. I'm leaving that to other people. When looking around for info, I learned some media had always been inspired by politics or political stories in some way. Some media have political elements like discrimination religion, government, war, and more for the whole story for a small part in the lore that it overshadowed or for an episode or two. But not everything had political element or had deep politics. And then Revolution, Mario Kart, Pac-Man, or Super Monkey Ball are not political. I've been hearing people wanting shows, movies, or games to stop being political or woke in this case and get politics out of art. Well, that is not easy. I don't want to understand because of real life politics 
or the not that going on in real life and I'm in the same boat. People turn to entertainment to escape real life politics. Some people play Call of Duty for the gameplay and do not think it political even though it is because they just want to virtually shoot people in a fun game while eating a hot pocket. There is no denying politics or political element are in Fire Emblem, Metal Gear, or Edmund. But why are these better or not seen as an issue with most people than other words like mostly from an SJW or woke stuff? It could be because Metal Gear does the element well or it balanced. You let me know. If we remove politics or the element, it would ruin a lot of stories and other media as well. Even stuff you and I may like. This is why I totally don't agree with removing political element. It is hard not to make something political. If it had religion, government, or war, it had a political element or angle. I think the key here is to not stop injecting politics into the media, but to stop forcing politics. If the fourth woke politics had no reason, does not c contribute to the game from a world building standpoint, or to plead a certain group of people, I take issue with that. Forcing politics over making good media is not okay with people. All of that I talked about was a headache. Most of my annoyance comes from the left because they have more of an influence in the entertainment media. They are more focused on political talking point and diversity over making good media and good quality without artistry or cleverness. Getting back to creation, I think it's important now more than ever for real creativity and fun. We need creative people. We need real talent. And we need love in the media again. It's bad to allow entertainment to be fun, not force anything, and not care about offending weak minded people. Media has always been inspired and try to date something with artistry or subtlety. Without artistry or cleverness, the media would suck. A lot of people are starting to see the problem. Don't get me wrong. The far right had a problem too. And they can be too preachy or have their talking point as well. The far left and the far right have issues with their media and both are hypocritical. Woke and SJW talk way too much and are seen as more of the problem and are problematic in entertainment. Okay, let's just imagine if I made a different version of my show that had the element of satirical commentary on modern society or let's just stay on the satire topic. Making jokes or jabs about men the red pill or conservative feud would be okay with the top that left it, SJW, woke, or whatever word people want to use, they would not have a problem. Although apparently people don't care what very conservative people have to say, but if I criticize woke and wokeness, Toptic feminism, the fat community, or anything on the left, or a part of woke, these woke people would have a meltdown 
And now we have to start caring about feeling an extra. So it's okay to make jokes or to criticize one side, but you cannot do the same to the other side or things that are a part of woke. Do you not see the problem here? And again, to remind people, the toxic woke people or toxic SJW are extreme hypocrites and attack or cancel people while playing the victim and all that other stuff. I want to create something fun, tell stories I want to tell or prefer to watch. I want to make my project without woke nonsense. With the help and advice from people who love anime, games, and other nerdy stuff. Remember what I said earlier? I know some people will turn down my project, or I would have to make small adjustments, and that's okay. However, I am not changing anything for this woke. I want to focus on making good media, Rather than making sure I don't offend anybody, my project is not for everyone. When you try to make something, a game, a movie, or show for everyone, you make something for no one. My project is not aimed at men. It so happened to appeal to them more than anyone else. It isn't to say women are not allowed to watch or it not for them. Because there are some women who are into action, fighting, and martial arts. Although, I have to be honest, I do not have any passion for making woke media or adding element I don't want in my project. Why would I add feminism or LGBT topic to my project when my project had nothing to do with it? Here is a fun fact. Growing up, I never had an issue with gay people. Gay and straight people are or can be the same in my opinion. The only difference is who they are attracted to. A man is only gay if he is attracted to other men. A man with feminine traits or is very flamboyant is not gay or it does not make a person gay. There are a few gay characters in my project, but the only thing gay about them is sexual attraction. That is it. Maybe a small trait, but nothing extra. Anyway, because of what is going on behind the scenes in some Western companies in the USA, but not in the East like Japan, and companies like Disney and whatever they own have a 50% DEI requirement when it comes to making a show and characters. I want to find a company in the USA and the state I live in that did not go after ESG scores or care about it much less. I want nothing to do with ESG and DEI. I don't want toxic woke people or fake activists hijacking the project and forcing their nonsense on me. They make it a habit of ruining the fun or the fun out of people. In modern day USA, you will find different people of different backgrounds with different opinions. Did my project take place in the modern day USA? Mine a questionable thing. Putting diversity in my project is not a big issue. But my project is not going to be super diverse. Not every show or game needs to be extremely diverse or inclusive. And I do understand why the topic is talked about. 
people want to see themselves in entertainment media. If I was gay and I am not, I would want my sexuality to be seen and respected. I do care a little about some sensitivity and I don't really want to offend people by race or nationality. But everyone had a different view on what made representation offensive, accurate, or a stereotype. For example, if I have a Native American in my project, I want to make the character right and not offend real Native American. However, if a toxic SJW got offended, I could not care because everything offends them. But to remind people, a lot of shows in recent years have gay and trans people and other diversity than race. Not to mention, there is media made by people of different races, cultures, sexualities, and so on. There is a lot of other media out there, so look at those. And don't expect everything to be diverse. Not everything is made for you. And that goes for everyone, even me. The only thing I focus on when it comes to diversity and representation is race and nationality. It's easy to stay focused on that one type of diversity and representation. I already talked about a few gay characters and how I'm making and writing them. Both the men and women have respect for each other and have their gender characteristics. How I made my character is a bit much to talk about. The only thing I can tell you is that I did not make my character with DEI in mind. Also, with making my character, I did not know DEI was a thing until I looked into it. What I do is think about what type of character I believe would be great or fit well with the rest of my character. My main influence for race and nationality comes from fighting games like Street Fighter, Tekken, Virtual Fighter, and much more. Growing up, I always loved D&D diverse fighting game characters like Ryu, Ken, John Lee, Paul, Raven, Eddie, Jackie Bryant, and Jeffrey McWild. I don't want to have a character that is a stereotype of their race, culture, sexuality, but I also don't want to erase those features in that character. I don't want to have a show where all of my characters are totally the same. I want fun and creativity. My focus is on the whole character and making them well written. I made their culture or sexuality a character trait, not their whole personality. When it comes to women characters, I have ideas for modesty and feminine characteristics. I'm not into making overly sexual women, but I'm not going to make them genderless or ugly or make them ugly on purpose. On the topic of strong female characters, strong female characters are not the problem. It's bad writing. Bad writing can make a strong female character into a Mary Sue or a boring girl bot with no issues whatsoever. I want to make strong female characters the right way. No girl bothered. Since my project had a big focus on action and fighting, disabilities like being mentally disabled or someone in a wheelchair would be an issue because my project focused on action and fighting. I don't think I need to explain anymore. Also, I am not putting any obese character or the fat community nonsense in my project. I have already talked about my view on that. When people watch anime, action movies, 
martial art or a boxing fight, what do these have in common? People are in shape. I hate to be this guy, but no one wants to see an overweight or obese person in action or fighting related media doing action and fighting. No, that is not fat phobic and no, that is not mean to say. That is being honest and telling the truth. Also, if you put a 500 pound person in a anime where the person is fighting like someone in Hajime no Ippo, people would look at me and say, Is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? Doing all the representation the right way is not going to be easy. While diversity is great, it should not feel forced or borderline pandering. Representation should be a choice, not an obligation. How things are implemented, the intention behind it, and how it blends into the narrative is something to keep in mind. Representation and inclusion need to happen naturally and be organic. It takes time to add a certain type of person or diversity into a theory. I think being casual and not making a huge deal about it would be better. Okay, this video was something. Here is the thing. I didn't make this video to make people feel sorry for me or to feel bad for me or to make people mad. I wanted to give my take on this whole crazy stuff that is happening. I don't know how modern society got this way. Now, people can't just tell things like they are anymore without being cancelled or losing their career. If someone feelings matter more than the truth and honesty, then that is their problem. I'm still not an anti-woke person or anything crazy after all of this. I'm not a part of the woke or anti-woke group. I'm not a part of the red pill, blue pill, or any pill. I'm not drinking any Kool-Aid or whatever people want to say or use. I'm not a part of any of that and I don't want to be. I want to avoid radical extremists of all types altogether or crazy people in general does not matter who you are and i don't think you need to be right or left leaning or be a part of any group to call out insane behavior and what some people are doing it wrong and if you think anything i have said in this video is hateful harmful or offensive i cannot imagine what would happen if you come across something or someone actually hateful or offensive no offense to anyone but while everyone is over there being outraged offended and triggered i'm going to be over here playing video games watching content working on my project or trying to better myself i have no time for this crap i know i use a good chunk of time talking like a downer but not everyone had gone crazy i think we will be okay in some area there are probably a lot more normal and reasonable people out there online or offline I think a lot of what we see online is blown out of proportion, but it still needs to be talked about because ignoring it is not going to do us any favor. I don't get mad or outraged over problems or stupid things. I would say annoyed, disappointed, or dumbfounded, but not mad. Just because people are outraged by one serious problem or something stupid in society 
Does it mean we all have to turn off our brain and become outraged by everything we see online? Whatever is wrong with modern society, people need to stop it nonsense or get some help. I do not know about you, but I'm a person that wants to do right. I do not want to be a part of this nonsense. I don't want to be around bad people. And I want to live in reality. The irony of the reality part is that my project is not totally based in reality. I will keep a close eye on toxic woke people, bad or questionable people in the entertainment media. Because I would not want to deal with these people if I got the chance to make my project a reality. I already know my show and game are not going to be made for everyone, and that is fine. I don't want to change for wokeness or woke politics. Why would I change something for people who are not going to watch anyway? Also, these toxic woke people or woke extremists only make for... Let's make a random per like 10 percent in the usa making a show or game for only that 10 percent is not a good idea but it's not like it mattered a lot of people are not going to watch this video i mean i could have said something like or say something like sonic forted it's the most political game ever and people would not know what i dead because they didn't watch anyway i would love to see my work on something like adult swim or cartoon network there is a bright side not everything is total crap or what some people like to use woke not everyone is following ESG, and there is still some life and fun in entertainment media but not from toxic woke people as for my entertainment, I try to balance looking at old and new media because I kind of need both. Can't look at everything old. I like to use my time, money, and fun widely. I don't own everything and I can't play every game or watch every show. I don't like to feel a show or game if it is woke or not. The best way to judge media is not by wokeness, but if it is good or not. You can have all the diversity you want, but if the show or game had bad writing, lame characters, or boring gameplay, my answer is no. But that is great for me because my backlog and other games are calling me. I don't know who you are. Heck, you don't know who I am or what I look like. I'm not a hardcore gamer TM that played Call of Duty and drink Red Bull. I'm just a dude that played Nintendo game. You know how we